My name is Kathy Nelson. I'm the CEO and founder of the Photo Managers. Uh, welcome. We're thrilled you're here. We uh, every it seems like it's becoming a pattern where every month we bring really good training information to you consumers who are looking for help with managing all your photos. Last month we introduced a company called Milio. Uh, and it's a new uh, program that people are interested in learning more about. We had great attendance to that. And then Allison, who put this presentation together about Shutterfly for her own customers. She's a member, a certified member of the photo managers. And I saw that and I thought, wow, I think people would really like this information. So I asked Allison if she'd be willing to redo her presentation. She said, absolutely. And uh, obviously, this is a very hot topic since, like I mentioned, we had over 600 people register and it's important. So I am going to let Allison take it from here and introduce herself. And she is the person who will be guiding you through this whole process. Allison, welcome. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Kathy. Um, yeah. As Kathy, can y'all hear me okay? Thumbs up? Thank yeah, you, okay. Um, as Kathy mentioned, I, I put this together because there was a notice from Shutterfly changing their policies, and I all of a sudden had a whole bunch of people contact me saying, what do I do? So, and I've had many clients with photos in Shutterfly, so I've been through this process many times. So I put this together, uh, and when Kathy asked me to do it again, I said, why not? Because literally everybody I know has photos in Shutterfly. So let's get started. I'll share my screen here. And, and then also before Allison gets started, we do in the yeah. chat is a great place to write your questions. Isabel, who does an amazing job with that, will be mm -hmm. going through your questions. I think at the end is probably the best approach, right, Allison? Yeah, I have a couple of, of clear stops in there uh, okay, for questions, good. but we'll yeah, sure so that they're sort of questions. natural stops. So um, can you see my slides? Yes. Title slide? Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. So here we go. Are you ready? Um, first, just a quick bit about me. Kathy mentioned a little bit, but yes, I am a certified photo organizer. It is a real thing. I recognize a lot of people on this call I saw came in, so you already know me, but for those who don't, my business actually just turned two um, yesterday. So oh. I have had a great time uh, over the last couple of years helping people enjoy their photos instead of being stressed out by them. Um, and it's been a real pleasure. And I actually couldn't believe it that it had already been two years. So that's me, but you don't really want to hear about me. You want to hear about how to get your photos out of Shutterfly. So here we go. What we're going to talk about today is how to download uh, the original photos from your personal account, how to download photos from your share sites, how to, if you have any in there. Um, a quick note about best practices for backing up your photos. And then um, a little, a quick talk about some alternative places where you might want to put your photos and for sharing because Shutterfly was often used for sharing. And the share sites are really the impetus for doing this talk now because Shutterfly announced uh, end of last year that they would be ending their free photo storage. Um, but if you make a, a purchase every 18 months or so, for now anyway, you can still store, store your photos there. Um, but then at the beginning of this year, they announced that on March 25th, so a little bit less than a month, uh, or a little more than a month from now, um, you will no longer have any access to your share sites or any of the photos that are in them. So that made it a little bit more um, uh, made it more that we should be talking about this now so that you don't, you know, March 25th comes and goes and you realize there were great photos in there and you no longer have them. But there's no need to panic about your regular photos because if you do make a purchase every 18 months, uh, Shutterfly will keep your photos that are in your own account there. They won't delete them. Um, but at the same time, you should have a copy of all of your own photos. You should not be relying on a free photo storage site to keep them safe for you because they won't. That is not their goal. Um, and it's not why they're allowing you to store photos there. So while Shutterfly might be great for purchasing mugs and calendars and photo books and other fun photo gifts, 
it's not a good place to store your photos or at least not a good place to have your original photos if you don't have them anywhere else. So the first thing is how many photos do you have? I have discovered a lot of people have no idea how many photos they have in Shutterfly. There's a lot of reasons for that. But if you want to find out, once you log in, um, you need to do this from a computer, but once you log in, you go over to this photos tab here and there's a drop down that says my photos settings. And under that, you go to usage and that's where you can find out how many photos you have in your account. So I actually have 11,000 photos in my account. Um, and that was partly accidental. At one point I had accidentally pressed that auto upload button from my phone and a whole bunch of them went up there before I even realized it. Um, for me, not a big deal. I have them elsewhere, but this is where you wanna find out and this is your starting point so that you know what kind of a project you have in front of you. The other thing you can find out is, I don't have a slide on this, but some people I discover don't actually know if they have any photos in a share site. So I don't have the right slide, but if you are on your, you have just logged in and you see your name here, if you click that you drop down menu, it'll say feed. share sites and you can click on that and you'll know if you have some. So let's start before we talk about how to actually download, there are some limitations. Um, not all your photos will be in albums, even though that's normally where you initially look for your photos, but they're not always going to be in an album. You can only download 500 photos at a time. So if you saw my 11,000 photos, that's a, lot of, uh, that's a lot of downloading groups. When you get an email that your downloads are ready, you may or may not know which downloads those actually are because if you're downloading from an album, it won't say your downloads from your Italy album, here they are. It'll just say, here are 437 photos you requested. The initial download will only have small files and not the originals. Uh, the one exception is if you posted these onto Shutterfly in the last uh, roughly a year, I don't know what the actual cutoff is, those will likely come out as originals. Everything else, anything older, will be smaller, much smaller files. So you actually need to request your photos twice to get to the original files. This is why it's difficult. Before you start, um, again, think about, I have 11,000 photos in there, so you need to be, I need to be organized to get them out. Um, if you have more than a couple of downloads, you need to be very organized. So before you start, I suggest making a list, and that list would contain album names um, and the number of photos that are in that album, or you can actually take a screenshot and print the screenshot out and then check off as you go along, if this works for album. The number of years you have in there or what years are in there, if you're gonna download by year. And then you'll want to have space to check off the initial download was requested, the original download was requested, and then once they're downloaded. When you have your list, then create a set of folders on a um, computer or wherever you're gonna store them. And that will uh, create a set of folders that with the names from your list. Um, and you may need to adjust how you're doing how you're doing this as you go along. Um, for example, if you have albums with more than 500 photos in it, then you'll need more than one download for that album. Same with years, that type of thing. And this is why you need a list. This is a client of mine where we downloaded over 10,000 photos, I don't remember the exact number. And after I went in and requested all of the downloads, this is what I got in my inbox. And they all look literally exactly the same, except for these numbers right here. I don't, it's small, so I don't know if you can read that, but these are the numbers of, of the photos in each download. 88 in this one, 23, 22, 28. So they're, they're really difficult to figure out. Um, if you don't know, if you don't keep a list. 
So I created a list so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel um, and you'll be able to just download this one. Oh, Isabel's already put it in the chat um, and you can adjust it as needed, but this will help you keep track of what you're doing. So once we start, a couple more things to think about. Um, not all of your photos will be in albums. So the first thing you might want to do, though, is take a look at those albums. Albums are generally the photos you care most about, for one. But think about if you can delete any of them before you start. Just because you have 11,000 photos in Shutterfly doesn't mean you want to keep 11,000 photos from Shutterfly. So take a look at your albums and see maybe there's some that you don't need. So, you know, just leave them or delete. I would actually delete them so you don't get confused. Are the albums organized by subjects that you want to actually keep together? And if yes, download by the album. And that by subjects keeping together, I mean things like um, soccer. My son played soccer for years. And if I had an album in there of just soccer and that album spanned many games over many years and I want to keep that group together, I probably want to download the album. But if the album is you know, wedding on January 1st, 1987, you could also do that by year. You're not going to lose anything by not downloading the album because you'll know where those photos are. If you have more than 500 photos in an album, you'll need to just select up to 500 at one time and then go to the next one. And, and I'll get into how to do that. So this is what it will look like here is your download button. So if you have less than 500 in your album, then you can just click this down, you open your album and you can just click that download button and that will pull all of the photos into one download, assuming it's less than 500. So you'll click that and you'll get this message that says there's 17 photos in this particular album. This is my dog. Um, and you'll get an, you'll get this pop up on the screen that says we're preparing your 17 photos for download. And once ready, we'll notify you at the email that is attached to your account. And that is the only email that can access these photos. That's the email that will get the emails from Shutterfly. And when you click into those emails after you get them, that's the only way you can get to these photos. Now, you likely have a lot of photos that are not in albums. And I saw a couple of questions in the chat about how to find those. Um, you just click on the photos tab and you'll see them. But it's not going to tell you there whether that particular photo is in an album or not. It just shows you all of your photos. So there's no easy way to know whether you're looking at your loose photos if they're in an album or not. So when you look at those, um, I suggest you know, again, not necessarily downloading everything because you might not want everything. So consider if you can download, if you can delete photos that you don't want, um, or you can choose the photos that you do want for download. Sometimes that is easier depending on how many you have, or you can kick the can down the road and just download them all. And then later on, um, go through the, the photos that you now have and, you know, at a slower pace. I would actually suggest doing a little bit of culling before you download because you might as well do it now, especially with the photos in your personal account because you have at least 18 months before any would get deleted. Um, if you wanna download by year, um, if you have more than 500 photos in a year, and I have a slide on how to figure that out a little bit, you might wanna download by quarter. Um, or if you're really prolific, download by month, but just be consistent and make the appropriate entries on your list and folders. So, you know, if you can download 1987 all in one shot, then write 1987 on your list. But if you have to split it up, um, you can do that. I see somebody asking about prompts for Mac. I did all of these slides on a Mac, just so you know. So, so it should be the exact same. It's a website, so it doesn't make any, it doesn't matter where you're downloading from. Um, one problem that you might run into 
is if you are downloading both your loose photos and downloading by album, you will get duplicates. Because as I said, you can't tell on the loose photos if that photo is in an album. So again, if your albums are events, it might be easy to weed out duplicates because if it's a wedding on June 2nd, 1987, you'll know that those photos from the album are also at that June 2nd, 1987. If it's soccer over a 10 year period, um, that will be harder. So it's just a choice that you have to make. Um, there is a way once they're downloaded to weed out duplicates, but that is, we don't have time for that during this talk. Okay, so a couple of tricks if you want to download from your loose, loose photos to make sure you get everything. You can select an entire month. If you look here, if you're scrolling down through your um, photos view, and you'll see this here, it says July 2018, and there's 384 photos here. If I click right here, that will select all of the photos in that particular month. Um, or you can select your first photo, scroll down and shift click to get to the to get that whole bunch. You can also search by year. So you can see roughly, you know, how many you have in a year. So here I did a search for 2018. Next to the search bar, I just typed in 2018. And I see that I have 569 photos for 2018. Well, I can't download those all at once. So I know at least 2018 has to be split in half. However you decide to do it, um, add this to your list and create the folders, naming the date range and the number of photos that you selected so that you can match it up later. Because remember that a slide from before showing all those emails I received and the only thing that was different about any of those emails is the number of photos. So it's important to keep track of which photos, how many photos are in a particular download that you're requesting. Once you've selected your photos, either by month or you know the shift click, however you've done it, you'll see this black bar on the top and this download button right here. So this download button works the same way as the other one did, but this time it's going to download the photos that you selected. Anything in orange with a check mark will be in that selection for download. You click that and you'll get this preparing 384 photos or whatever it was um, ready for download. It's the same message we had before. Once it's ready, we'll notify you at your email. Once you've clicked that and you have this, go back to your list and check off the, write down what this download is. So this one was July, 2018. Put that on the line on your list and check off the initial download request um, and the number of photos, like I said, in case you need it for later. So you'll receive, the first email that you'll receive from Shutterfly um, is that, well, I think, Actually, you'll receive an email that says we're preparing your photos for download. But then the first real email that you care about is you'll receive an email that says your Shutterfly photos are ready for download. It won't tell you what album or year, but it will have a few thumbnails attached. So you'll be able to see what, what some of what's in that. Um, when I requested 384, it's not going to show me 384 thumbnails. It'll just show me the first couple. Um, it will tell you how many photos are in that download. So this was the 17 photo download of my dog. And to see here, it says download 17 photos. So I'll know how to match that up on my list. I'll know what email this is for. Um, but when you look at it, you'll see you can click this big red download button, but you want to bypass that because if you click this, you won't be getting your original files, you'll be getting what they call high resolution, um, high resolution files, which are a lot smaller. These will be generally around maybe half a megabyte, give or take. What you want is this button here, the smaller one that says need the original files. So click on that to request the originals and you'll get a screen that looks like this. It'll take you to Shutterfly and you'll get this screen right here. And it'll say initiate original photo transfer. Um, and it'll say can take up to 17, seven to 14 days. 
I've, in my experience, it's much faster than that, but that's what they say. So click here again, bypass the bright orange button and click this original, prepare originals. And then go back to your list and check off that you have requested the originals for that download. You'll then get a second email from Shutterfly that will look almost exactly like the first one. Um, only this time it'll say your Shutterfly original photos are ready for download. So again, this looks quite similar. It's the same thumbnails of my dog, um, but now it says download 17 original photos. And now you can press that big orange button, go to download, and it'll take you back to Shutterfly where you'll get this pop-up <clears throat> that says your originals are ready. In this case, there were only 17. So it's in one zip file. So that's nice and easy. And I can click download um, and download that into the, the um, file or the folder that I had prepared for this album of my dog. Um, so you click download and then you can go and unzip from there. Every one, now note that every single one of these downloads will be named archive. So if you have a, a group of 500 photos that you're downloading all at once, you'll get a group of zip, of zip files all named archive, archive one, archive two, archive three with no other identifier. That's again, why you wanna download these directly into the folder that you had created. So for this one, I'd probably created a folder named Loki 17 photos. That's my dog. Um, so I want to put that archive right into that folder. Otherwise, later on, I'll have literally no idea what they are. So this is what it would look like. This was a request for 300 photos, archive one through five. This was a different request for 475 photos, archive one through five. They look exactly the same. So you really need to put them into the right photos, into the right folders. Okay, questions? I see a few in there, but maybe Isabel can yeah, read well, them off to me. Yeah, we have a question um, from earlier when you were talking about um, ha having to purchase from Shutterfly in order to keep your photos there. Do you mean anything can be purchased, even a mug or something like that, or does it only have to be, or is it only related to photo books? No, for, for now, anyway, um, and their policies can change on a dime, who knows. But for right now, they say literally any purchase of any amount. So if you want to kick the can down the road for a while, purchase whatever the cheapest thing they have on their site is, and that will give you another, uh, that'll give you another 18 months. But, you know, for now, the, I have no idea what their policy will be in 18 months. And um, is this process required to be done on a desktop computer? Is it possible to do it on an iPhone or, or an iPad only? Um, I think you have to do it on a desktop. Otherwise, uh, I haven't fully tested that because with a lot of photos, I can't imagine why you necessarily want to do it on your phone. But I think to go through the process to get the originals, I might be wrong on this point, though. So I'm not sure, but it's certainly a lot easier on a computer. And is this the only way to know what you've requested and received um, the number of, of images? What if you have multiple requests with the same number of images? And I have had that happen. Um, they will also, in each one of those emails, so if we, well, I don't want to screw up my slides, but they'll, the email will also, when you open the email, it'll show you a few thumbnails that are included. So I don't know, three to five, maybe thumbnails. So on one of those slides, you could see the picture of my dog. Let's see if I can easily go, uh, I can go easily back. So on this one, this is in the email. So once I clicked open the email, I see these two pictures of my dog. So that gives me a hint of what they are. Um, but other than that, that's the only way you can see. And if they're, the, if they're your own photos, that might be enough to tell you where they go to, but otherwise I would just try not to have the same number. Or if it does, you know, if you have two downloads and they each have 257 photos in them, um, because they're your own photos, you'll probably be able to figure out what they are once you open it. But that's the only other way to know um, is the number in these thumbnails. 
And is there a reason for downloading the photos? Um, is that because Shutterfly is getting rid of shared sites or um, if you don't have the photos on shared sites, is it necessary to download the photos? So next up, we're gonna be talking about the share sites. Um, if, they, if your photos are on your personal site and not on your share, uh, you're not coming from somebody else's share site, then they are safe in your account according to Shutterfly if you make a purchase every 18 months. So you can leave them there, you can download them, whatever you want. Um, as we'll get into, the shared sites are a completely different story. And if you want to save the photos from, that somebody else posted to a share site you are part of, they will be gone as of March 25th and you won't have any access to them, which was one, one reason why we're here. And that'll be my next section is how to, to deal with those. And we have a couple of questions about um, downloading the photos into either a specific folder or to an external hard drive, how does that process work? Is there a way to do that directly? There, there is. Um, on a Mac, uh, I can't remember, honestly, if this was a setting that I set initially or if it just does it. But if you're on a Mac, when you hit download, it should ask you what folder you want to put it into. And then you can choose the folder that you created um, either on your hard drive or on an external drive, it doesn't matter. If you're on a PC, if you're in, if you're using Chrome, Google Chrome, um, there's a setting that you need to go into that will, where you can have it ask you where you want to put your photo, where you want to put your download. If you don't have that turned on, they all go into a downloads folder. Uh, so I, I don't really have time to go into how to do that now. But if you Google it, at least on Google, um, Google how to change download folder in Google Chrome, and you'll find it. And someone mentioned that they found that sometimes Shutterfly doesn't send the exact number of photos requested. Are these photos lost forever? So in that instance, I've had that happen a couple of times too. Um, one thing you can do is try the, go back to that original email and see if you can download the high resolution version or go, go into your account literally, if you know which one it is and download that photo individually. Um, if they don't give it to you when you request originals, you can try it again, but they probably don't have it. So you'll, you'll need to just do the high resolution or the thumbnail or whatever. I, I don't really know the back end of Shutterfly, but uh, I suppose you could try and contact them and ask. But my experience is if it's not in that original download, they don't have it. All right, thank you, Allison. I think we're ready to move forward, but before we move forward, I know there are some yeah. questions about um, reviewing a couple of slides again and the recording. Just wanted to send a rem or, uh, remind everyone that we are recording this. It will be sent by email within the next couple of days and also uploaded to YouTube. And I will drop the link again in the chat for those that would like to download the slides. Okay, so share site. Um, as of March 25th, so roughly a month and a half, you will no longer have access to your share site. They don't specifically say that they are deleting the photos from the share site, but they say you won't have access. So to me, that is literally the same thing. Um, so it's really important to one, see if you have share sites, and two, if you do, get those photos out in the next month and a half. So there's two ways to do it. You can, and the easier way, if you have a lot, is to save to your personal Shutterfly account. And I'll go through how to do both of these things. The second way is to download photos directly from the share site. Um, limitations of this, you can only get the photos and videos out. If there's any, if there was any comments, some, some share sites are set up like message boards almost, or they have schedules and things. You can't save any schedules, comments, calendars, anything like that from the share site. So I suggest if you want some of that, just take a screenshot of it or many screenshots and store that with your photos because that, that there's no other way to recover it. Um, if you were not, if you were the one that posted the photo into the share site, 
So you go on vacation with your parents and your brother and you set up a share site so that you can um, all share your photos as the trip goes along. Photos that you put in to that share site are already in your personal account and you do not need to worry about them. So this is really just about collecting photos that other people have put into a share site that you have access to. Um, and once we go through this process, if you find that you can't actually download the photos, you're going to have to contact the person who put them up there and ask them to change their privacy settings. In my experience, most people don't have an issue with that. The, um, I've never actually seen any where the photos are protected, but technically there is a setting that people could have used when uploading those photos to not allow downloads. So you'd need to contact that person um, to change the permissions. If you wanna download single photos um, from the share site, you can do it right from, like if you go into your share site, you go into the um, photos section, you can download single photos at a time. Uh, you just click on this, there's a little three dot thing right here. You click on that, you get this menu and it says download this picture. So you'll just download that, that single photo. Um, it will likely not be a full size photo. In fact, I usually mine are all old, so I actually didn't test this, but I'm pretty sure that most of the time this will just be a thumb load, a thumbnail there. Um, and you can only do one at a time. But I also want to point out right here, if you look at all these photos, this is from one of my son's AYSO soccer teams, which at least in Chicago, they all use Shutterfly share sites. Um, most of these photos, no offense to the other children that were on my son's team, but most of these photos I don't actually want. So it actually does make some sense to go through and figure out, do you actually want all of these photos or not? So if you go through here and you see, you know what, I do not want this album. I'm not sure how many are in here, but I don't want this whole album. I just want a few. Then from this same menu here, when you click that, one of the options here is save picture and that will send the photo to your personal account. And there's limitations that we're gonna get to on that, but it won't, um, if you don't need them all, that might be a good thing to do is set up an album in your personal account that says, in this case, photos from share site U10B5, which is what this, my soccer team was called and put them in there in your personal account. If you want to instead save the album, the whole album to your own personal account, and this is easier if, for example, I did want all of those photos of the whole team, I would do it this way. I can, I can save that album to my account. Um, and then from there, go through the same process that we discussed at the beginning. So you go on to your share site and you find they're, they're all set up slightly differently, but you go to photos and videos and you say, you select here, it says save album. And it'll say select pictures to share to your Shutterfly account and you can choose all right here. Um, and then it will create, there'll, there'll be prompts for you to create an album in your own account. I often get error messages and I power through them and it still works. Um, so you'll just go through that same process to get these onto your own account. Now, one thing to know is photos from share sites may not actually have originals. It just kind of depends on how they were uploaded in the first place but you won't actually know that until you've gone through the whole process of sharing it to your account, requesting the initial download, and then requesting your second download. And you won't know it until you get those photos back and you kind of see how big they are. One additional note of caution, and this is a big one. Even when the photos from a share site are saved to your personal Shutterfly account in an album that you've created, if you did not upload that photo initially, but it's coming from somebody else, if the original owner deletes that photo from their account, it will be deleted from yours 
as well. This is directly from Shutterfly. Um, this is their wording right here. It's in their, their own um, instructions. So if I decide, okay, I had put up all these photos of my son's soccer team. You know what? I don't need those anymore. I'm going to delete them. Nobody else on that soccer team will be able to get them. And if they've already saved them to their account, they will disappear from their account. So if that is a concern of yours, do this now. Or if you notice photos are missing, you're going to have to contact the original person who put them up there. And I, I, I don't know if you get any notification. I suspect that you don't. They may just disappear, but that I'm not sure. Okay, uh, one more slide and then we'll take some questions. Once you have your photos, uh, this is just a very quick because I have to talk about backing up with literally any presentation I give at any time to anyone. What do you do with them once you've got them? Um, and we'll talk about a few options later, but for now, if you've just, just discovered you've got 11,000 photos in Shutterfly and they're nowhere else, then you need to also be thinking about a backup strategy going forward so that you don't get into a similar situation later down the road. So what you should do um, is have three, follow the three, two, one backup strategy, which is three copies of all of your photos. And this goes for important documents as well on two different media, meaning uh, say your computer and a cloud service or an external hard drive and a cloud service um, and keep one of them off site. So a, hard, a second hard drive that you put in your office instead of your home or a cloud service can be off site. There's a whole lot of mix and match that can that can go on here. And just a, a note of caution for Apple users just to, to be aware, just because your photos are in Apple photos on your phone and you can see them on your computer, it's still only that one copy. Um, so unless you're downloading originals to your, your devices as you go along, a lot of people don't do that. It's still just one copy. So this is my little extra PSA for today to make sure you have three copies on two different media with one of them offsite. And if you wanna learn more about that, there are actually some blogs on that on my on my website, although I didn't give Isabel the link for that, but if you go to my website and blog, there's a couple there that talk about that in more depth. Okay, and questions? I have a feeling there's some. Um, the first question is, uh, what sort of data is uh, sort of, including photo captions are transferred from photos that are downloaded from share sites? Oh, from specifically from share sites? Well, for one, when you're downloading out of Shutterfly, the captions do not come with the photo. Um, often it will retain the date, but it won't, it won't keep the caption as far as I'm aware. I don't know if there's any workarounds for that. Um, from the share site specifically, I'm not sure that that's any different. I think it's probably about the same. But if you're talking about any commentary, like if there were people that were, you know, sort of discussing the photo back and forth on the site, that doesn't come with the photo. And how do you find out if your photos are in a share site? If your own photos are in a share site? Um, that's actually a really good question. I, I, I don't know that there is a specific way to do it other than going to a share site and seeing, are these your photos? I don't think that they're marked in any way. Although actually, if it depends on how they were uploaded because I think there's times where if you go in it might say, you know, 56 photos uploaded by Allison, um, but it's not clear. It doesn't make it, there's nothing easy about figuring that out. And just to confirm, if you uploaded um, the images yourself, will you have a copy of them in, non -shared, in a non-shared Shutterfly account? Yes, they should be in your personal account. So this is the share site thing is really about downloading photos that other people have put in the share site that might be of uh, that you might want, not your own photos. For your own photos, it was the, the whole first half of the talk and you don't need to worry so much about those. But it's the photos other people put into those share sites if you want any of them. Now is the time to download. And like I said, so one, one thing I would do because 
if somebody were to delete them from their account or for some other reason, what I would suggest is do the share site piece of this first, save them to your account, go through the process. Then once you're in an album in your account, you know, AYSO soccer, 2018 request the download request the originals um, and then keep them safe on your computer. Shutterfly actually suggests in their documentation that you do, you bring them to your personal account, you download them onto, you know, your own computer, and then you re-upload them to Shutterfly. Um, it's what they say in their documentation. I wouldn't necessarily uh, suggest doing that unless you want to use them to make a product, in which case that makes a lot of sense, but it's not a lot. Of, it doesn't make any sense for storing them. And if someone's account, um, someone else's account is inactive and the photos are bumped or their account and their photos are bumped from Shutterfly and you've shared and they've shared photos with you and you've saved them, will they be deleted when the other person's account disappears? Yes. And that is why you need to download them first to your computer or hard drive or wherever it is that you want to download. If they are if if they are photos from a shared site that you save into your personal account, and that person deletes them, they're gone. So that's why I would suggest that you um, bring them into your account, but then go through the download process. And then, like I said, if you want to use them to make a book or a mug or a, a gift for a coach or whatever, um, re-upload them into your account. And if you re-upload them into your account they'll stay there because now they're considered your photos, not a share photo. And one final um, backup related question. If someone uses iCloud for syncing to their Apple devices and Time Machine and Backblaze, they've said that they've been told since their photos go to iCloud that Backblaze is not truly backing them up. Is that true? That, it, well, it depends. So if this gets into a much more technical question, but if you uh, just very quickly, if you have all of your devices set to optimize your iCloud photos, uh, then that is correct. The backblaze is not backing them up. If you have your device set to download originals to this computer or this device, I forget exactly how it's phrased, um, then it, I think it will be backed up. But you have to have the originals on your computer somewhere. Um, we ha have one question about photo storage, actually two. Uh, one is what's the best free storage photo or photo storage site? And then another kind of piggybacking off of that, what are the best paid photo storage sites and why is paid storage better than free? <laughs> well, to whoever asked that question, thank you very much because that's our next section. <laughs> so um, we'll just move to that now. Um, so alternative places to keep your photos. I love things that are free and I will never keep my photos in a free, what they, whatever they call it, photo site or not, if that is my only copy ever, because they can do exactly what these other things are doing now. Costco just got rid of their photo storage. And in fact, they sent all of your photos if they were in Costco or they're now in Shutterfly. There's nothing to protect you if, if they change their policies. So if you're not paying for the product, you are the product. They want your photos in there because they want you to buy stuff or they want to use it for to train their artificial intelligence to recognize, you know, a dog is a dog. Um, so I personally, I don't recommend, if it's your only copy, I don't recommend using any free photo site to store your photos and I, other people will probably differ on that. And that's fine. Debate is debate is good, but that is my own personal opinion. So be wary of the free storage site. Why is it free? Is it out of the goodness of their corporate hearts? Maybe I don't know. Um, and also be wary of the privacy policies, especially of free sites, because why are they free? Why do they want you to put your photos in there? Just think about that. Um, and as a little caveat, because I've had people ask me about this, looking for a free site, 
for, you know, site for photos they were going to use for collections for schools and sports. And I strongly recommend not doing that, especially where schools and children are involved, because you just don't really know what they they can do with their photos. So oh, backing away now from the dire warning, um, let's talk a little bit about, I don't know why there's these purple marks now on my slides. I don't know if you're seeing that, but anyway. Um, Let's talk about considerations uh, for other places to put your photos. Think about what do you need and what is most important to you. Um, is it the ability to share the photos with others? How many people, how often, how broad a group? Do you wanna allow other people to upload photos to the site? Do you want to allow people to comment on your photos? Um, privacy controls you need to consider. Do you want to be able to share directly from your own photo library or upload it to somewhere else to use it? And also think about if you were a big share site user, what was it that you liked and didn't like about Shutterfly? So go through this list, figure out what's important to you before trying to find a new place to put those photos. These are some of the ones that I use and like um, for sharing sort of the equivalent of a share site. They work differently. There's two. Um, Team Snap is one we've used a fair bit of for uh, my son's hockey teams where you can post photos and schedules and announcements and people can share easily photos from a game or an event. It's a subscription service. You may or may not actually know that because unless you were the manager of that of Team Snap, you might not know that somebody somewhere is paying for that. So it could be a cost that the team takes together or maybe somebody just does it on their own. So that one is decent. Another one I've discovered for sharing is Photo Circle, which is an app on your phone. Um, and everything I'm suggesting here works on both iPhone and Android and PC and Mac, with the exception of Apple Photos. So Photo better. Circle will work anywhere. Um, can somebody mute, please? Anyway, where Photo Circle, you can upload photos. It allows for commenting on photos, sharing. It's free with ads, but remember, free is never really free. The one caveat on this one is they say that you have control over each of your circles, which is what they're calling the share. But just know that if you create a circle, I did this experiment, I created a circle, I put some photos in it, I shared it with my husband so he could see it, great, it's working really, really well. He then shared the site with my son, had who had full access and that never went through me. So now I can see that my son is on there and I can I can remove him, but I can't stop him from joining in the first place. So just something to be aware of because if you have a, a broad team of say 20, 30 people and you create this photo circle, it's a great way to share, but just know that somebody may share it with their mother because they want their mom to see all the kids of the so in the soccer game. And then mom might share it with her cousin who might share it with their brother. I mean, who knows where it will go. So just be aware that you can't really control who's in your circle. But for a small family event or people that you fully trust to not share, that might be a good option. Some other, uh, some other sites that I have used that also allow for sharing in different capacities. We can't go through all of them here because that's a whole different talk. But some of them, um, Apple, you can create a shared album to use with Apple, use other Apple users. There's some limitations there, but uh, that might work for you. SmugMug, um, also another subscription service, which has great sharing capabilities um, where people can, um, you can share your own photos, people can add photos to the gallery uh, and that works well. You can see an example that I have one set up that you can see an example. Google has decent sharing, um, again, subscription if you're beyond your 15 gigabytes. Amazon, a lot of people don't know that Amazon Prime, if you're a Prime subscriber, you can store unlimited photos in Amazon, which also makes for a decent backup. 
Um, videos are generally extra if you have more than about five gigabytes, which pretty much every pretty much everybody does. And then one last one is uh, Forever, which is the only one on here that's not a subscription. This one, you purchase your storage and it has some similar capabilities as the rest uh, where you can share and people can also upload. Um, for the most part, in fact, for all of these, uh, with the exception of Mug Mug, I think, the photo storage with sharing section, these here, um, you can't comment on the photos. Actually, Apple, actually, Apple, you can, I believe, if you share a photo into a shared album, you can add comments. Shutterfly, you can add comments to photos, but the rest of these, I don't believe that you can. Um, forever, I know that you can. So those are some options, which again, can't really go into the pros and cons, but if you're looking for a different place to share your photos, um, then you might be able to, you know, one of these might work for you. And then um, if you need help, because there's no single photo solo storage solution that's perfect for everyone. And in fact, every client that I work with, we have a long discussion about what are your needs. We assess where should they, what is going to work best for you? Um, are you an all Apple family? Then maybe you want to stay in Apple. But if you're not, then there's a lot of other options like the ones I just put on the slide. So if you'd like my help in figuring out where you should put your photos, um, you can do a consult for me where we'll go through in depth some of these questions and many, many more, and uh, we'll figure out what works best for you because I put my clients all over the place. I have clients in Forever, Smug Mug, Apple, lots of different places because no one's needs are the same. So if that's interested, something that interests you, feel free to reach out and contact me and we'll go through your needs specifically. Um, and just because I'm giving this webinar so I can give a little bit of a plug for myself, these are just some of the services that I offer. So if these are things that you're interested in, um, drop me a line in any of these and, uh, and get in touch. Um, are there any questions before we wrap up. I know Kathy has a couple slides, but are there any, let's go through any questions. Um, can you share with iCloud? It's a general Yeah, question. you can. Specific enough. Yeah, um, if you mean iCloud and not Apple Photos, yes, you can. Uh, a little more complicated, but yes, you can share through iCloud. I'm not sure I would suggest that as like a broad team sharing thing, but if you're sharing with a few people, that might work. And do you know the backstory of why Shutterfly made these decisions? Is it because of sheer volume or something else? I, I don't know for sure. I have a lot of guesses, but um, I don't know for sure. And when someone downloads um, photos from Shutterfly, do any of the EXIF data get stripped? Yes. <laughs> so it's not, in my testing, it's not consistent. So most of the time I have found that the dates come with the photos. Um, as I said, if there's anything you've added in Shutterfly, I know Shutterfly has some facial recognition features and stuff like that, that will not come out with your photos. But the dates for the most part, not all, but I have found that the dates tend to, to come out. One thing I also should have mentioned, I mean, if you've spent a lot of time adding captions to your photos, Shutterfly used to have, and I'm not sure if they still do, but you used to be able to order actual prints from Shutterfly and on the back, they would actually print that caption. Um, so if that's something that's super important to you, you might be able to do it that way. You'd have to go in and check though, because I haven't done that, I don't think ever. Um, but I know that they used to offer it and I don't know if they still do. All right, I think that wraps up the question. So we'll hand it back over to Kathy. All Allison, right. that was amazing. I actually, at the beginning, <laughs> I mentioned to people, I said, I don't I have anything on Snowderfly. I logged in, guess what? I have photos on Snowderfly from 2013 
And uh, some of my dad who had passed away, I know I don't have those in my collection. So thank you, because I'm going to hang up and go back and watch <laughs> this, uh, <laughs> go back and slowly work through your process again for me as well. So uh, that was amazing. I really appreciate uh, the time that you put into it. So like we mentioned to everybody, I know there was a lot of information there. We will be making, uh, you'll have access to this so you can go back and watch it slowly. And then also, if you're interested in more training and support, uh, we have uh, the Photo Organizing Hub Facebook group, which is you can find it, uh, just go to Facebook, uh, Google the Photo Organizing Hub, and we can make you members. It's a free uh, place where professional photo managers offer their advice, and uh, it's a no-sales environment, so you're, you know, it's just good information, and we'd be happy to let you in there. Uh, there's my book, Photo Organizing Made Easy, which you can uh, purchase from Amazon. We also are growing our YouTube channel. We uh, You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel at the Photo Managers, uh, 5300, 5300, and uh, sign up for my weekly newsletter where I put out information every week. Also, you want to go to the next slide. Um, and also, if you're interested in this as a career, right, There's uh, this is amazing. So Allison mentioned she's been a member for two years. She was an, a, formerly an attorney, and we just did a great webinar with her a month ago called how uh, called career advice from a pro. So if you enjoyed learning from Allison, you could hear her story about how she even started a business like this, what she recommends, what are her what she's learned along the way. And uh, we also have a webinar on starting a successful business as a photo manager, which uh, Isabel is linking there in the show notes and you can watch that that's Thursday. So we do those fairly regularly. But we're excited to uh, bring you this kind of educational information. We plan to do a lot more of this. So if you join our hub or if you want to send us a note at support at the photomanagers.com, if there's a topic that you would like more information on, this kind of a free presentation, let us know. We have a wonderful team of professionals I know who would be happy to share their expertise just like Allison did, though. So thank you so much, Allison. And again, uh, Isabel's busy dropping all those notes in the chat. Sign up for uh, Allison's uh, great cheat sheet that will help you keep track of where your albums are because they sure don't make it easy, do they? No, they don't. And there's Nobody. a reason for that, but we I won't know. go there. People always say that. I was joking with a friend. Uh, here's somebody said, you just made this. I had a 76,000 photos, 21 share <laughs> sites, and you just uh, made everything clear and understandable. Yeah. I Great. do also offer a service where I pull photos out for you. I guess I could have mentioned that too. But uh, if you get really overwhelmed, give me a call. Oh, I say hire somebody to do it for you. Yeah. <laughs> you might get really busy all of a sudden, Allison, but uh, I think so because, you know, I think people ask like, why are they doing this? The, the, you know, these companies aren't looking to make it simple, right? They, they want to capture your, uh, they want us to keep adding, you know, every month you can keep upgrading your storage and things like that. So there's, you know, the dollar rules as always in many of these situations, but what's different here is these are our photos and these are the memories of your life. So that's what really, um, what makes this so difficult. So thank you so much, everybody. We will be getting you this recording. Again, it'll be on YouTube. Again, thank you, Allison. And uh, reach out to us again if you need any more assistance at support at the photo managers, but certainly reach out to Allison for more information too about getting your photos out of Shutterfly. So thanks everybody. Have a great day.